Travel can be ridiculously expensive, but it doesn't have to be that way. I want you to imagine your dream destinations. What if I told you you could visit any of them, all of them, for basically free? And not only that, but you could even fly first class or stay in five-star hotels if you wanted to. A couple years back, my wife and I quit our jobs and traveled full-time for six months through Europe and Asia, and our journey was incredible. One of the best parts was we did it without spending our life savings, thanks to a stash of over 1.7 million points and miles that we had earned through strategic travel credit cards. Now, you might not want to travel as extensively as we did or as long as we did, but what about a free vacation every year? That is very achievable. And so in this free masterclass, I'm gonna teach you how to travel the world for basically free with points and miles. I'll give you a high level overview of what travel rewards are, provide inspiration on ways to redeem them and break down the basics of how to actually earn them. And then we'll dive deeper into exactly how to book with points and miles for maximum value and learn how to identify which travel credit cards are truly worth it. This is the resource that I wish I had had when I was just getting started. And by the end of this video, you should have a very solid grasp of how all of this works and ultimately be able to visit those places that you've always wanted to without emptying your wallet. But before we get into the good stuff, I need to give you a couple of disclaimers. One, basically everything I'm gonna mention in this video is focused on credit cards you can get here in the United States. And I'm sorry, because I know we have viewers that aren't in the USA. Depending on where you're from, there may be options for you, but I'm not suited to speak to them. Secondly, credit cards are a double-edged sword. So if you can't handle the temptation of having access to a credit card, I want you to just turn off this video. What I'm about to share requires discipline, and my goal is not to convince you to do something irresponsible. And so to be responsible, you need to know how this all works. I see many people not get started with travel credit cards because they're afraid and because they believe myths about credit cards and credit scores and just how this works in general. Like, Nick, that sounds great, but opening new credit cards will wreck my credit score. This is nonsense. Opening new credit cards can actually boost your credit score if done correctly. Why would that be? Well, lenders do look at your credit score to decide whether or not to approve you for credit cards. And a credit inquiry, or when a bank runs a credit check on you after you apply, is a factor that influences your score. But it's only one of five factors. The others are payment history, do you pay your bills on time, credit utilization, how much of your available credit you're using, lower utilization is better, length of credit history, how long you've had your credit accounts, credit mix, the different types of credit accounts you have, and new credit, how often you apply for new credit cards. And these are weighted differently with payment history and utilization being the most heavily weighted factors. So does applying for a credit card hurt your score? Not really. It might cause a short-term dip because you do have an inquiry on your record. And over time, if you're using cards responsibly and keeping your utilization low, it's actually gonna improve your score in the long run. Myth number two. Nick, my cousin's friend Paul told me carrying a balance is going to help my credit score. I should do that, right? No. Carrying a balance means paying interest, which benefits the credit card company, not you. Instead, pay your card in full after each statement is released and set up automatic payments to ensure that you never miss a due date. Let's move on to the exciting part, earning and redeeming travel rewards. Points and miles are a type of loyalty currency that can be earned by participating in reward programs offered by airlines, hotels, and other travel-related companies. These programs are designed to incentivize you, us, to choose one of those companies over a competitor hmm. by offering some type of reward or benefit in exchange for your continued patronage. Now, these points and miles can be earned in a number of ways, which I'll cover in detail, but once earned, they can be redeemed for a variety of rewards, like free flights, hotel stays, etc. Now, there are really four major categories of points and miles in the travel world. Airline miles, hotel points, transferable points, and fixed value points. Airline miles, probably obvious, are rewards specific to airlines that you can redeem for flights. And if you've ever heard of airline alliances, you can even use these miles to book flights on other airlines. For example, you could use American Airlines miles to book a flight on 
British Airways. Hotel points, also probably obvious. You can use these for free hotel stays, upgrades to a nicer room, and a bunch of other hotel-related perks. Transferable points. These are a type of point that are earned through credit card reward programs, and then can be transferred to a whole bunch of different travel partners like airlines and hotels. For example, this card, the Chase Sapphire Preferred, earns a point called Ultimate Rewards, and those points can be transferred to several different airlines and major hotel chains. Example, you could transfer 1,000 Ultimate Rewards points to United Airlines, and now you've got 1,000 United Miles at least at the time of filming this video. Transferable points are a strategic way to earn because they allow you to choose which partner to transfer your points to based on your needs. And these are by far my favorite. Fixed value points. This is a type of reward that has a predetermined cash value. For example, where one point equals one cent. So in that example, 10,000 points would equal $100 towards travel. Capital One is a good example of this. With a card like the Capital One Venture X, you earn Venture Rewards miles, and you can use those points to book all sorts of travel. But another cool thing you can do with these is reimburse yourself for purchases that you've made towards travel that are otherwise not part of any specific loyalty program. I use these for Airbnbs and rental cars all the time. That's the four categories. And you can use points and miles for a lot of things, car rentals, cruises, theme park tickets, dining, and much, much more. But in this series, we're gonna focus on flights and hotels because that accounts for the majority of people's travel cost. Okay, now that you know the different types of points and miles, here's a few different ways to actually start earning them. Credit card welcome bonuses. The best way to earn travel rewards is by opening credit cards that offer welcome bonuses. Here's a few quick definitions. A welcome bonus is an incentive that companies offer so that you'll be interested in applying for a credit card. And this is typically something like, sign up today and you get 60,000 points when you spend $4,000 in the first three months. In this instance, the welcome bonus is the 60,000 points. Another term you need to know is minimum spending requirement. A minimum spending requirement is the amount of money that you have to spend using your new card, typically within a certain period of time, before you can earn the welcome bonus. So in the example I gave, it's the $4,000 in a three month period. Now, this varies widely, but in many cases, a single welcome bonus is sufficient to cover round trip flights from the USA to Europe. So you can see how fun this can get. Now, a really important reminder here is don't spend money you don't have and don't spend money you wouldn't spend. In this example, $4,000 in three months, for a lot of people could be achieved simply by putting all of your bills, your groceries, and your normal spending on that card, which may mean that you've gotta go change your auto pay or how you pay for things a few times, but trust me, it's worth it. And that leads me to the next best way to earn travel rewards, spending. In general, every purchase that you make with a travel rewards card will earn points or miles. For example, every $1 you spend will equal one airline mile or one hotel point. Unless you can amplify your earnings by spending within bonus categories. For example, some cards offer bonus points for dining, shopping at supermarkets, purchasing fuel. And this totally varies by loyalty program and by card. But for example, a card might allow you to earn three times points per dollar spent on restaurants, two times points on anything travel related, and one times points on everything else. As you get into earning points and miles, and as you start to carry maybe more than one credit card, you can see where doing a little math will help so that you know what purchases to make on what card. You definitely need a plan, and you can see how doing this right really adds up. Travel portals. So a lot of these travel credit cards also come with their own specific apps or portals. And one type of portal is a travel portal. Booking your travel through your credit card's travel portal can earn you additional points or miles. And so to add to the example I was giving, you could earn two points per dollar on any travel purchases, but if you book through that brand's travel portal, maybe you could actually earn five points per dollar spent. Shopping portals. Another very common type of portal is a shopping portal. And many travel rewards programs have online shopping portals that allow you to earn additional rewards for shopping at certain retailers. 
By starting your online shopping journey through these portals, you can earn extra points or miles on purchases that you were already planning to make. For example, if you were gonna buy a gift from Macy's, you could simply start your shopping journey in a shopping portal. And the list of possible retailers is huge. Old Navy, Nike, 1-800-CONTACTS, Home Depot, goes on and on. For those looking to maximize their travel rewards, there are what I'd call creative strategies to consider. For example, you could be strategic with large purchases like paying for your wedding or a home renovation with your credit card in order to earn a huge number of rewards. Here's a real life example. We had a hailstorm and we're homeowners, we had to replace our roof. Now thankfully it was covered by insurance so we didn't actually have to pay anything out of pocket. But here's where it gets fun. The insurance company mailed me a check. I asked the roofer I hired if he'd accept a credit card, which they don't normally do, but he said yes. So I deposit the check into our bank account and I then pay the roofer with a credit card. And then I pay off the card with the money from the check. And in the process, I earn an insane amount of points. This was like a $14,000 purchase. You can also add what's called an authorized user to your account to help you earn more rewards. This is essentially you getting a copy of your credit card and letting someone else spend on it. This makes a lot of sense for couples or sometimes for parent-child relationships if you're trying to help your child build credit, for example. But extreme versions are getting an authorized user card for a friend and letting them buy stuff and pay you back. I would personally not do that last one. I just don't wanna create unnecessary friction in my friendships, and I'm not sure that it's wise. But if you add a user, just make sure that it's someone you trust. Finally, and I do like this strategy, if you travel for work, consider paying for your travel expenses yourself and getting reimbursed by your company, if they allow that, of course, to earn even more points and miles. <sighs> so, it can be tempting once you learn about points and miles, travel rewards, to just go sign up for the next credit card offer that you see. But not all points are created equal. So it's very important to have a goal for how you actually want to use your points. And I wanna give you some use cases to inspire you on ways you could redeem. Maybe you wanna take your family to Disney World and have your flights and your hotels cost you nothing. Maybe you're traveling to Italy and you wanna stay in a luxurious five-star hotel. Maybe for your honeymoon or a big anniversary, you'd love to stay in an overwater villa in the Maldives. Maybe you wanna fly first class from the USA to Tokyo and enjoy an epic seat and luxurious dining. Let me give you a use case of what should have been the most expensive 48 hours of my life. And it was practically free thanks to points and miles. So at the end of Ali and I's six month trip, I really wanted to do something special as kind of an exclamation point. We spent two nights at Hotel Longarno in Florence overlooking the Ponte Vecchio Bridge for one last romantic hurrah in Italy. And then we flew home from Rome to Chicago in American Airlines flagship business class. All those Sundays, I still think about them. All of this together should have cost over $12,000, and we paid just 275. Now 275 bucks is not nothing, but it's way less than one person would normally pay for one international flight. This is just one example of what we did, thanks to points and miles. And so before moving on, get clear on your goal. What's that trip that you would love to take? And are you going after stretching your budget as far as you can and just using points and miles for free flights, free hotels, it doesn't matter how nice they are, just get me there? On the other end, are you going after that luxurious splurge experience? It's pretty nice to have a 12 hour flight be way more comfortable. Or are you something in between? I've done all of these. One consideration to think through is where you're going and or what region or part of the world it will be in. And the reason I say this is that could help determine what loyalty programs to consider. And when we dive into credit cards later on, which cards and programs specifically that will help you achieve that goal. One of my big goals was to get our family of three round trip business class tickets to Europe last fall. I'm currently flying from Chicago, Illinois to Vienna, Austria in Austrian Airlines business class. And normally this seat would cost thousands of dollars. But thanks to points and miles I earned through credit cards, it only cost a little over five bucks. I'd say we're way more comfortable this way. In today's video, we're gonna dive into how to actually use your hard-earned points to book travel. I'll show you how to book hotels, flights, and even walk you through how I know if I'm getting a good redemption value. 
And make sure you stick around to the end where I will give you the exact rundown of how I booked these seats for five bucks. Redeeming your points or miles for travel can be one of the most confusing and intimidating parts of travel hacking. And what I've witnessed is there are a lot of people with points just sitting on the sidelines. So let me say this real quick. The purpose of earning points is to use them. I know many people who have massive stashes of points, and if you're saving up for some big trip, that's great, but be careful not to do that for too long. Point programs can be devalued over time, and in certain cases, points expire. So if you're the person hoarding points right now, here's your reminder, use your points. Redemption strategies. There are levels to everything, and I'm gonna walk you through basic and intermediate methods. And along the way, I'll show you how to calculate the redemption value so you know that you're getting your money's worth, so to speak. My intention is to teach you the fundamentals and give you the tools to do this yourself. Let's start basic. The most basic way of redeeming your points is using them to book directly with airlines and hotels. And if you already know how to do all of this, go ahead and skip to this timestamp where I'll pick things up with online travel portals. Now you're gonna wanna sign up for hotel and airline loyalty programs for any place that you're gonna book. These are free and the easiest way to begin is to simply make sure that any flight you're taking or hotel you're staying in, you go ahead and join their loyalty program. Here's the basic step-by-step -step guide on how to book an award flight with an airline using frequent flyer miles. You'll go to the website of the airline that you wanna book with and you'll look for the options to search for award flights. You'll usually probably have to log in. And this may be labeled differently depending on the airline, example, book with miles, redeem flights, etc. But you'll enter your departure and arrival cities, travel dates, and number of passengers. Browse through the available flights and select the one that you want. Make sure that you have enough miles in your account, of course, to cover the flight. And if you don't, you may be given the option to purchase additional miles. Confirm the flight details and complete the booking process. Boom, it's that easy. Now, look, you will almost always have to pay something. There are taxes and fees like fuel surcharges when you book using points. And this varies intensely by airline, by country, et cetera. And some are just completely unavoidable, but some are avoidable, like baggage fees. That's a choice. Now, I'm usually a care and only traveler, but if you're not, that's totally up to you. If you have the credit card of the airline you're flying with, a perk that's often offered if you book using that card is a free check bag. Hotels. When it comes to hotels in the points and miles world, there are four main players. They're Hilton, Hyatt, Marriott, and IHG. And there are, of course, others, but in the terms of major loyalty programs, these are the big boys. And I would go ahead and just sign up for all four of these loyalty programs. The basic, simplest, beginner process of booking a hotel night is almost identical to booking an award flight. Search for the hotel, dates, select book with points, make sure you have enough points, and voila. But here's a few hotel-specific nuances. There's often an option now where you can use points and cash. If you don't have enough points to cover your entire booking, some of these companies will allow you to book using a combination of both points and cash. And you can kind of play with different scenarios and different ways to do that. Booking with a free night certificate. Every one of the programs I mentioned offers a free night certificate, typically when you carry one of their co-branded credit cards. Not always, but most of the time. The booking process looks very similar, except you'll use a free night certificate when you book. And usually these free night certificates are limited to a certain category of hotels or a hotel stay under a certain amount of points. There are also what are called multi-night discounts. For example, Marriott offers a promo where if you book four nights, you get a fifth night free. Hilton, book four nights, get a fifth free. IHG, book three nights, get a fourth free. Hyatt, nothing of the sort. So you get Nothing. Okay, let's move on to some more intermediate redemption strategies. Using online travel portals offered by credit card companies like Chase, Amex, Capital One, and others can be a great way to earn points, but it's also a good place to redeem them. The pros are you can book all kinds of flights and accommodations, even ones that may not be transfer partners of the card that you have, and you can book using your points with that bank. If you don't have sufficient points, you could also use a combo of points and cash. Some cards even offer statement credits for booking certain types of properties. For example, if you have the American Express Platinum card, you can use $200 toward the fine hotels and resorts collection. 
Combining your Amex points with an actual purchase that you'll make on your Amex is a great way to get a really unforgettable place to stay. A con, these booking engines are often undergirded by third parties like Hopper, Booking.com, et cetera, which means you aren't booking direct with the airline or the hotel, which means you usually won't get status, elite credits, et cetera. And the other thing is, sometimes the pricing in these portals can be higher than if you were to just book direct. And you may often get a better value from your points by just transferring them instead. Transfer partners. With cards like the Chase Sapphire Preferred or Reserve, the American Express Gold and Platinum, and the Capital One Venture X, and many, many more, you can transfer your points to partner airlines and then book directly using those points. And this part really seems to intimidate people, so I'm gonna show you how to do it. Three steps, three easy steps. Search, transfer, book. So for example, let's say I find a flight on Singapore Airlines, but I don't have any Chris Flyer miles. I know that Singapore Airlines is a transfer partner of Chase. So I can go to my Chase account and transfer the exact amount of miles I need to Singapore Airlines. Note, make sure that your flight is available before you do this. You cannot put miles back into your Chase account. Then I proceed to book my flight with Singapore Airlines. Now you're probably thinking, okay, but what if I wanna fly with an airline that isn't one of my card's transfer partners? Let's talk about airline alliances. Maybe you've heard of these, but what are they for? Well, think of airline alliances as big teams of airlines from around the world. By teaming up, they can offer you more destinations, smoother connections, and better service. Airline alliances help you have a more connected, comfortable journey, especially if you're flying internationally. And they're very crucial to points and miles and airline loyalty programs because often you can use your points with one airline to book flights on another airline in that alliance. There are three major alliances, Star Alliance, One World, and Sky Team. One example of this, American Airlines is not a transfer partner of any of the big card programs, Chase, American Express, Capital One, City, but they are in an alliance with British Airways. And British Airways is a transfer partner of Chase, American Express, and Capital One. So I say all of that to say, using transferable points to transfer them to airlines can be one of the most valuable uses of your points. But if you understand the various airline alliances out there, it can be even more powerful. Okay, now that you know the simple, basic ways to use your points and a couple of the intermediate ways, let's talk about points values. Points and miles are a type of digital currency, so they've got some kind of value, right? When you use your points, how do you know if you're getting a good value? Getting your money's worth, so to speak. Well, to figure this out, you need to consider two things. One, point value. What is a point or mile actually worth in terms of dollars? And two, redemption value. What is the value for your points or miles in this specific booking scenario? So what is a point or mile worth? Much smarter people than me spend a lot of time figuring this stuff out. And there are resources that I personally reference regularly. I like to use the points guy. They have a list of most of the points currencies out there and they've determined the cash value for these points. You'll notice that they're all expressed in cents per point, right? Chase Ultimate Rewards, two cents per point. Southwest Airlines, one and a half cents per point, etc. And they update this huge list monthly. This is very data driven, but in the end, some of it is still kind of subjective. So if this says American Airlines miles are worth 1.7 cents per point, then that is a great goal to shoot for when redeeming. That's point value. So what about redemption value? To determine redemption value, we need to do a little math. And what we're solving for is the same figure, cents per point. So when considering the value of any given redemption, what you need is the typical cash price for this redemption and what it would cost if you used points or miles. The basic formula is cash price divided by number of points, and then you multiply that by 100. But award bookings tend to have taxes and fees, remember? So let's include that too. We'll subtract that from the cash price. So find out the cash value of the flight or hotel you're redeeming your points for, then determine the number of points that you would need to use to get that flight or hotel, plus any taxes or fees, and now subtract the taxes and fees from the cash value and divide that number by the number of points. Then you multiply by 100 to get the value in cents. I don't know about you, 
but I am not a fan of having to do a bunch of manual math or remember a bunch of steps. Personally, I would rather have like a calculator or a tool do it for me. There are actually a bunch of tools all over the internet and I found a great one on Reddit years back. I took it and I modified it slightly and I linked that below. Uh, feel free to grab your free copy. It's super simple to use. So here's an American Airlines flight that would normally cost 200 bucks, but this flight costs 19,000 American Airlines miles plus $5.60 in taxes and fees. So I'm going to plug this in to our calculator. $200 cash price, 19,000 points or miles to redeem, $5.60 taxes and fees for redemption, and it spits out the cents per point you're currently getting and then automatically tells you what the best value will be. In this case, you would probably be better off just paying cash. Now, there's no perfect redemption. Um, in this instance, one cent per point is quite a bit different than 1.7 cents per point. I actually think this is a really bad redemption. But let's say for whatever reason, you don't have $200 cash to spend on this flight, and you do have 19,000 American Airlines miles laying around, use your points. Don't stress out worrying about, did I get a perfect redemption value? These points are meant to be used for travel. You should still shoot for a great redemption, but in certain instances, like the one I just laid out, maybe it makes sense to use them. Okay, let's talk about a great redemption value. How did I book those Austrian Airlines seats? Well, I actually used several of the techniques that I showed you in this video. I was searching on united.com, which is actually a great place to find award flights for more airlines than just United, thanks to the Star Alliance network. My goal was simply to find affordable ways to get to Europe in a business class seat. Now we're not always in this situation and I recognize many people watching are gonna be like, no, I wanna go to this particular destination. But in this instance, we didn't have a specific destination in mind. I was just determined to find a great deal on business class seats to Europe. We wanted to go to Europe and then build a trip around that. Upon searching United, I found a trip from Chicago to Vienna in business class. The flights were on Austrian Airlines, which is a Star Alliance airline. Now this isn't the most amazing seat in the world. It's not Emirates first class or anything, but it's a lie flat seat, my friend, let me tell you. And they have a professional chef on board. This seat can normally cost over $5,000 per person. And I found it for only 88,000 United miles. That's how I booked my seat, but I actually booked Ali's separately. Why? There are actually other Star Alliance partners with solid options to search out there, so I tried one more. I was actually able to find the same flight through Avianca, which is a Latin America-based airline and a transfer partner of American Express, Citi, and Capital One for only 63,000 miles. This is called a sweet spot, which is essentially an unbelievably good redemption, a deal, if you will. Getting from the USA to Europe on 63,000 miles is a perfect example of a sweet spot, and Avianca does it all the time. There are tons of sweet spots out there, but it can kind of feel like striking gold because it takes a lot of research and trial and error. Avianca is a transfer partner of American Express, so we used some of Ali's Amex membership rewards points to make this happen. And we got those points through her Amex Platinum. The flight was amazing. We got to spend nine hours eating gourmet food, watching movies, sleeping in a life flat bed, and waking up mostly refreshed, ready to explore Vienna. I say mostly because we had our nine month old with us. Uh, she did pretty good, but she's still a nine month old. I hope this series on points and miles is helping you dream up a similar scenario for yourself. And you're starting to believe it would be very possible to pull off. And in the meantime, I've linked to several resources, including the redemption calculator I showed you down below. Okay, finally, I didn't wanna make this video without recommending a couple of tools and resources. First one to check out is Flight Connections, which is a website that shows you all flight routes worldwide. Yes, all of them. And it's a search engine that can quickly and easily show you all the flights to or from any destination. Basically, it's an interactive map that visualizes how to get from point A to B. Plug in your destination airport to see all the different ways to get there, or pop a city into the from box to see all the different places you can go. Either option is great if you're trying to figure out possible nonstop flights for award bookings, or if you're planning a multi-stop trip. Why does this matter? Well, let's say you wanna to go to Rome and you wanna fly business class. The easy way to know which airports and airlines can get you there 
is Flight Connections. Last one I'll mention isn't a tool, but it's a great resource. It's a free daily email that helps you stay in the know. It's owned by travel YouTubers Karen Nate, written by a cool dude named Mike. And unlike my philosophy of mostly teaching the principles, Mike and the team at Daily Drop really dive into the daily nerdy stuff and all the exciting updates and news happening in the points and miles world. I linked the sign up below. Now, none of these tools are any good if you don't have any points to begin with. And as you know by now, one of the best ways to earn points and miles is to sign up for travel rewards credit cards. But in an industry controlled by financial institutions and dominated by clever marketers, it's hard to know which credit card offers are genuinely good and which ones should be ignored. So now I'm going to break down seven crucial things to consider before applying for a credit card. My wife, Allie, and I once traveled full time for six months, largely thanks to 1.7 million points and miles that we saved up. And we earned those points without taking a single flight. That's right. All of those points came from strategically signing up for the right travel rewards credit cards. But there are so many offers out there. I mean, you can't even take a flight anymore without getting pitched a credit card. So how do you know which ones are good offers? Today, I'm gonna to teach you seven essential things to consider before applying for a travel credit card. And make sure you stick around till the end, where I'm gonna share two special hacks that I use to earn double the points. So the first thing we have to talk about is your credit score. Your credit score is crucial. There are certain travel rewards credit cards that simply won't be available to you if your credit score doesn't meet the issuer's requirements. Before you apply for any card, do some quick Googling about the minimum credit score they're looking for. There's a card out there for just about every credit score, but certain cards will only be granted to those with excellent credit. It's wise to check your credit score regularly so that you have some clarity about your credit standing. The tool that I use to check my credit score is creditkarma.com. It's completely free and you can check your score daily. There's no inquiry or hard pull or anything like that. And it's easy to create a free account and view scores from TransUnion and Equifax. Credit Karma also gives you some tips based on your situation to help you manage your credit better. Credit Karma is not a sponsor. I'm not an affiliate or anything like that. It's just simply what I use to keep tabs on my credit score and this next thing I'll tell you about. A major factor before signing up for a travel rewards credit card is the number of cards that you've already opened and how recently you've opened them. Certain banks pay very close attention to this and depending on your history, they may automatically deny you access to certain credit cards. For example, Chase Bank has this unwritten rule called the 524 rule, which means that if you've opened more than five credit cards in the past 24 months, you'll be automatically denied for Chase credit cards, no matter how good your score is. And Chase cards are some of the best cards in the points and miles world. And for that reason, in many cases, it's advisable that you start your points and miles journey with Chase cards. If you don't, because of the 524 rule, you could be seriously limiting your points earning potential. This leads us into consideration number three, the type of points you'll earn with the credit card. As I mentioned in an earlier video, not all points are created equal. What that means is you could have two credit cards with what appear to be identical welcome offers. Card one offers 100,000 points and so does card two. Which one would you choose? My answer is I need more info. If card one is 100,000 United Miles and card two is 100,000 Chase Ultimate Rewards, I'm choosing card two every single time. Why? Well, at the time of filming this video anyways, United Miles are valued somewhere between 1.1 and 1.4 cents per piece. Chase Ultimate Awards are valued at two cents per piece, and you can use them in way more places than you can United Miles. In other words, the value of those offers shouldn't be seen as 100K versus 100K. It should be seen as 1100 to $1,400 versus $2,000 that you can use towards travel. To value points currencies, I use a source like the Points Guys Valuations, which are updated monthly. And there are plenty of other options out there too. The program and the card you choose could also depend on your individual travel goals. For example, if you have a specific trip in mind and you know the exact airline you wanna fly, that could limit which card you choose. Maybe that airline's not a transfer partner of Chase or Amex or Capital One, any of these powerful card issuers, but the airline does have a co-branded credit card that allows you to earn that airline's miles. In that case, it could be smart to use that airline's co-branded credit card over a more valuable card that earns a more valuable points currency. There's no one right answer here. The point is, do the math. The next consideration is the size and timing of the welcome bonus. You need to understand the value of the bonus, yes, 
But keep in mind, these bonuses can also fluctuate seasonally and during promotional periods. For example, a few years ago, my wife Allie got the MX Platinum with an elevated signup bonus that wasn't publicly marketed. We got a direct mail piece for 125,000 membership rewards, while the regularly marketed bonus was somewhere around 80,000 membership rewards. If you're trying to accumulate points and part of your strategy involves opening more than one card, the size and timing of the bonus could dictate the order in which you apply for these cards. Another factor to consider is the minimum spending requirement. Ask yourself if you can reach that minimum spend to actually unlock the bonus with your regular life purchases. Most cards that offer sign-up bonuses require some kind of minimum spend within the first few months of card opening in order to earn that bonus. For example, a common minimum spend is $4,000 in the first three months. For many people, this amount spread across three months is achievable if you put all of your personal spending on that credit card. However, if the minimum spend is too high, like 8,000, 10,000, 15,000, the average consumer might not be able to reach that without making a bunch of unnecessary purchases. Consider the welcome bonus and the minimum spending requirement are one-time considerations. So if you anticipate major life purchases, you might be able to meet a larger than average minimum spend if you can charge that purchase to a credit card. Major life expenses like a wedding, a home renovation, those can be opportunities to consider opening a new card. At least that's how I look at them. Unlike those one-time events, the annual fee of the card is a recurring expense. This fee is something you'll have to pay every year to continue receiving the benefits of the card. So when evaluating cards, consider what the card's annual fee is and whether the benefits and perks offered are enough to offset the annual fee. For example, many hotel credit cards out there come with an annual fee of somewhere in the 90 to $100 range, but they also tend to come with elevated status and at least one free night in that hotel chain per year. Now you need to do the math in terms of what's right for you, but typically that free night is more than enough value to justify the annual fee. The Chase Sapphire Reserve is another card with a substantial annual fee, 550 bucks. But it's regarded as one of the best travel rewards credit cards out there because the perks and benefits that it offers more than offset that annual fee. For example, there's a credit against the first $300 you spend on travel each year, which effectively reduces that annual fee by 300 bucks. And then it has all kinds of additional perks like access to over 1300 airport lounges worldwide, complimentary Dash Pass and Lyft Pink membership, trip delay and primary rental car insurance, a statement credit against TSA PreCheck or Global Entry membership. A lot of things that, if you travel often enough, offset the annual fee if you use them. I personally carry this card, but if you don't travel often enough to get value out of all of those things, it may not be right for you. You may wanna check out a card like the Chase Sapphire Preferred, which has an annual fee of only 95 bucks. There's also no annual fee cards that come with far fewer perks, but they cost nothing to keep open. It's important to note if you open a card with an annual fee and later decide you don't want to keep paying it, do not just go close the card. That can hurt your credit score. Instead, consider downgrading the card to a $0 annual fee version. I've done this many, many times, and it's more common than you'd think. You just call the credit card company and ask if you can downgrade to another card. Okay, as promised, here are two clever ways for you to get way more points, and they're important considerations when you think about which card to sign up for. Two-player mode. When considering points and miles accumulation, remember to factor in the combined efforts of your household. For example, when I mentioned earlier that my wife and I earned 1.7 million points and miles, I mean my wife and I, we collectively earn those points. When we redeem these for flights and hotels, sometimes we're using points in my name, sometimes we're using points in her name. This approach, commonly referred to as two-player mode, involves both partners working towards a shared goal. And you might be thinking, Nick, my significant other is not interested in stuff like this. I'll tell you, it's not unusual for one partner to be more interested in this than the other. I'll let you take a guess on who that is in our relationship. And just kind of managing it for the household the same way they might manage other financial things. I own this strategy for us, and because our household finances are combined, Ali trusts me with 
owning this. So sometimes we apply for cards in my name, sometimes we apply for cards in her name. And the beauty is, if you remember the 524 rule from earlier, well, now it's more like 1024 giving your household more chances to access great credit cards. Now it's important to note, this is not the same as signing up for authorized user cards. If you're trying to accumulate a lot of points through signup bonuses, I advise against authorized user cards for your significant other because these count as credit inquiries and can impact your eligibility under rules like Chase's 524 rule. Another great way to earn more points faster is through business credit cards. Business credit cards can offer excellent bonuses and help slow down the number of inquiries on your personal credit. Now, I'm not gonna go too deep into this, but you may be thinking, Nick, I don't own a business. But if you have any kind of side hustle or really any income generating activity, there's actually a strong chance that you could qualify for a business credit card. Okay, if you're done with all this theory and you wanna get practical, I wanna give you a couple of ideas and resources and suggestions. If you came to me today and you wanted to get started with Travel Rewards credit cards and you said, Nick, which card should I get to help me travel for free? People come to me and ask me this question all the time. I'm gonna assume that you have a great credit score and that you haven't opened a bunch of cards recently. Remember, this is not financial advice. I'd first point you toward a card that would earn a transferable points currency like Chase, Amex, Capital One, or City. If you're under the 524 rule, I'd tell you to consider Chase cards first because it's a good place to start. I'd probably mention the Chase Sapphire Preferred, which is my favorite travel credit card for travelers who don't travel a lot. It earns the most valuable points currency. It's got a low annual fee. I think it's just a great all around card. And actually right now, this card has an increased signup bonus of 75,000 points for a limited time. Those 75,000 points are worth over $900 in free travel. If you live in the USA and you have room in your wallet for an extra card, I highly recommend this one. This is normally my top recommended travel rewards card. It's a great beginner card. And one of the reasons it's so popular is because the annual fee is very low. It's only $95. And with the current signup bonus being worth 900 bucks, you're basically getting 800 in free travel after the annual fee. I'm gonna leave a link to this card with more details in the description and also a QR code here on the screen that you can scan. If you're gonna apply for this card, I would love it if you would please consider using one of our links because it does help support our channel at no additional cost to you. I've also linked to a really good article below breaking down nine reasons you should consider the Chase Sapphire Preferred card. Check it out because it goes even deeper. I'd also tell you to consider if you have a specific trip or goal in mind and what airlines fly to those destinations and what hotel chains are available there. And then I'd tell you to research the available offers at that time. Depending on your goals, depending on what's available, things can really, really very, everybody's situation is different. There's also a tool out there called Card Match, which can help you figure out which credit cards you're pre-qualified for. There's no impact to your credit. It takes about 60 seconds. I'll link to that below as well. Finally, make sure you subscribe to this channel because in future videos, we'll be diving into specific credit cards and I'll reverse engineer trips that we book with points and miles, as well as all kinds of other travel tips and advice. Thank you so much for watching. Happy travels.